of us woodworkers have a pile of these ratchet straps. They come in handy for so many things. In this video, I'm going to show you how to greatly improve the functionality of your Polk workbenches with one of these ratchet straps. I'm Ron Polk, and this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you want to get a detailed set of plants to build a smart wood shop for yourself or the brand new Polk Big Bench, there's a link in the description of this video down below where you can go purchase any of my plans and download them instantaneously 24-7, 365. All of my workbenches are very stable for finished work. They'll hold up a lot of weight and they have a lot of lateral stability. I've taken and designed these sawhorses to be very light, very quick to set up, multifunctional, and do a really good job of supporting the kind of work that we do in finished carpentry. But recently I added this Polk Smart Cradle to work with all of my benches. And this has been fantastic. It allows me to hang my DeWalt battery table saw off the end or side of any of my benches. By sizing it larger, I'm able to hang the much larger, much heavier saw stop saw off the end, as well as my Craig Foreman and my sander and any other tool that I want to hang off the bench. The one drawback to adding all of this weight cantilevered off is it creates this heavy lever that puts a lot of weight shifted out here which can lift the bench. Again, the bench is very solid and stable for holding up the work that I'm doing and also lateral stability so that I can really work on the bench. But it, it's not attached, the bench itself is not held down. So by shifting this weight out here, if I put enough weight on this, I can lift the other end of the bench. Now, it's more so on the Polk Smart Big Bench because the carriage underneath remains the same size for holding up the smaller Polk Smart Bench and the Smart Station. I wanted to keep that undercarriage the same size. I wanted that universality so that everything would work together. I could have made the sawhorses bigger and spaced them out further to, to the end and that would cut down on this. But even with the smaller bench, when I put the heavy saw, particularly not, not as much this DeWalt, but when I put the real heavy saw on, it really does put a lot of weight on one end which reduces the weight on the other. So I've played around with a lot of options over the last month. These big holes you see cut, and by the way, when you see my benches and my carts, a lot of times you're gonna see extra and different holes that are not on the plan. That's because that, this is part of prototyping and testing and checking things out. I get it all dialed in before I give a set of plans to you to build. So yours will end up being a lot cleaner. These holes that I cut on both ends that are longer were to allow me to, uh, to shift the bench in one direction and then slide it for an adjustment so that the cradle itself would actually touch the table saw. And I did that on the smaller bench and that worked really well. It did a, it did a pretty good job, but I could still put enough weight on it if I really pushed it. Nothing I do in the real world, but I really want it to hold up for every application. I could still lift it a little bit even with that shifting, so I decided that I, I wasn't going to go that way. And then I worked with thinking about actually coming up with connectors for the sawhorses, the, the um, tops of the sawhorses, they have the hinges, and those hinges go up into slots on the bottom of all the benches. They aren't there to hold things down, they're, they're there just for assembly, just for a quick index so that everything lines up. Again, no, no way to hold it down. So I thought about adding on to the sawhorses and having some way that it would come up inside the bench and maybe having a clamp or I, I tried many different ways of doing it. And I got a few of them to work, but what I didn't like was the complexity. The benches are simple. I either set up my smart cart, two horses, and then put the bench on and it's ready to go. Or if I'm not using the smart cart, I have the two horses 
the spreader shelf, and the bench goes on and again, ready to go. If I start getting into uh, clamping and, or, or pins or rods or something like that, I really wanted it to be passive. If you look closely at this smart cart, this is the very first one, my prototype, you'll see some dados on the end and I have a single one on the other side. This was all experimenting with using um, a strip of plywood and then having matching dados on the bottom side of the cradle where I could just slip in a board. I started with one in the middle and that worked okay, but I had side to side tipping. So then I went to two, one on each side and that worked pretty well. But again, it didn't do much to take the uh, ability of the other end to tip up. Again, it wasn't connected. So I experimented with putting supports under the cradles that went directly to the floor. And of course that works because then the you know, there, it, it removes that tipping point. But I didn't like that because I do like the cart. I like the fact that it's on wheels and I can move it around. And so, so anything that touched the floor, I would have to uh, take off or I'd have to make that a wheeled contraption as well started getting complex and I like to keep things simple you know my shop is portable I want to take it on the job I want it to function as a no compromise wood shop to work as well as big heavy benches that are tied down in shops but yet give me that mobility that portability you know both being portable so that it's easy for me by myself to move the entire shop to the job but also when I'm on the job, I love this cart for moving it around. Well, I didn't give up and I came up with a solution that is simple, lightweight, and costs no money because we've all got these straps. All I need to do is strap the end of the bench opposite from the cradle down to the sawhorse or to the cart. If I were not using the smart cart, I would simply take a ratchet strap like this, this is a light duty one, with these hooks, and I would just hook it onto the bottom of the sawhorse and onto the bench, and then ratchet it down. And of course, I would go ahead and cut the length of this shorter just so I don't have all of this to deal with, and that's it. So I would always have the straps with me, and if I didn't want to cut a strap, if I wanted to use it for other things, I could just toss this in underneath there. And now, this end of the bench would be tied down to this sawhorse and with the spreader shelf on and then th things on the shelf, I start adding a lot of weight and that helps offset that tipping that I'm getting from adding weight on the other end. In my scenario though, I am going to use the smart cart 100% of the time. So I want to take advantage of the fact that this cart is bigger and heavier and connects all the way to the other end. And I want to attach the strap to the cart and then to the bench. All I need to do is drill a single one inch hole. You'll need to ignore these dados. Again, this was a prototyping thing and my other cart doesn't have it and none of the future carts I build will have it. And of course your cart would not have this. So with the one inch bit, I'm going to measure down an inch and a quarter and, and centered. And of course, to be clean, I'm going to finish the hole from the other side. And then all I need to do is hook into that hole, hook onto this end of the bench, and ratchet it down. And now I've tied the bench down through everything and really help offset that tipping that I get from the heavy tool on the other end. So I've experimented with the ratchet straps with the hooks, and also with the ratchet straps that don't have the hooks that you have to loop back around. And I actually prefer this for myself. And I just will feed this through the hole, come back up through, and then I, I hook through both benches. And I want to bring it so that the ratchet is, is beneath where I'm working here. The advantage to this setup is that I want to do this on both ends, even on the end where the cradle is. And this gets the ratchet out of the way and I don't have a hook up here that would interfere with the cradle. These straps, I have tested it on the other side. I've already drilled a hole in the other side. And these straps do not interfere with the cradle the way it is coming up 
tight against these. So my solution to really stiffen the bench up is to drill a hole in the cart on both ends and then I don't need to worry about which end I'm setting up and to go ahead and even though I really only need the strap on one end to go ahead and strap it down on both ends and really pull the bench down so now I not only have all of that strength that it holds up and all of the lateral stability but now I have the hold down power just with a couple of straps that you already own. What could have been complicated and clunky and increase the time to set up has turned to simply drilling a one inch hole twice and adding a couple of ratchet straps. If you enjoyed this video, if you've learned anything, if you'd like to see me make more, then be sure to give me a thumbs up, share this channel with others, and also to ring that bell so you'll know when I put up a new video. You stay safe and have a great day.